What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Retro Aviation. Hope you guys have a fantastic day today and today we have a very exciting video for you guys. I really hope you guys are excited for today's video and without any further delay, let's get into it everybody. So today we have something a little bit different but I'm very excited for this as today we're going to be doing a tier list rankings on all the airports I've ever flown to. So I'm really excited for this and a huge credit goes out to Citrus Aviation for coming up with this idea and I also know that Aviation 18 did some uh, videos like this where he ranked his favorite aircraft that he's flown on and all kinds of cool stuff like that so credit goes to both of them for kind of this tier list uh invention if you will we've done some of these in the past but it's been quite some time so i'm really looking forward to this as they were going to be taking a look at all these airports that i've flown to and man there are quite a few so i've flown to 27 airports all very diverse and uh different experiences every single time so i'm really excited to talk about this as we have several airports to go into today and i'm really excited for this so again huge credit to aviation 18 and such aviation great guys go check out their uh channels and i know Citrus recently did a video on this, like I was saying. So definitely go check it out as it is really good. So anyways, without any further delay, let's get into all these airports, guys. So like I said, there are 27 airports here and I'm gonna be ranking them just from the overall broad perspective. This includes infrastructure, my personal experience, how it was when I was there and etc. And I'll kind of go into some details about, okay, it was like this when I went there and it was like this nowadays, you know, that sort of deal as well. So I hope you guys are excited for this. And without any further delay, let's get started, everybody. So we have a nice lineup here of airports as you guys can see, we have several here, so I'm really excited to dive into this. And let's just not waste any further time, everybody. Let's get started. So the first airport's kind of hard to see right here. Let's see what airport it is. This is Houston Intercontinental, Inter or Houston Inter uh, Intercontinental International Airport. I'm sorry, that's kind of a tongue twister to get started here. But I was in Houston. Uh, in June of 2022 and I thought that it was pretty solid you know it really depends on what portion of the airport that you're on uh, I personally came in into the new terminal E area on the southeast side of the airport and then departed from the new terminal C building so honestly my experience was really good but I did go to the A area the terminal A gates on the south side and the north side and there was definitely some uh, some of the parts of it were definitely dated but it also wasn't too bad uh, just from the general perspective when it comes to amenities and all the offerings there it's 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 good enough for the size of the airport, but I've seen better big airports. With all this being said, I think the average category is the right place for Houston. I think that it makes the most sense there, and I think that it's a pretty good airport, but there's definitely, if, if this would have been a couple years ago, I think it would have been down here in the mediocre area probably, but it is improving slowly but surely, and hopefully maybe the next time we revisit this topic, it'll be up into the good area because I think it has that potential. All right, next up is the biggest airport in the United States in terms of passenger movements. This is the Atlanta Hartsville Jackson International Airport. Atlanta was really good. I've been there twice. I was there in 2019 and 2022. Uh, I did kind of have the biased perspective as I went to every single tournament. So I do know a little bit about every tournament. I've done most of my um, time at Atlanta through C, D, B, uh, and a, uh, quite a bit of A as well. And all the uh, all the tournament buildings were really nice. There was one major setback that I was very disappointed in, and this was more of my fault, but they have multiple baggage carousels, and I checked the bag because I had too many, and they have uh, the north side, which is 138, and then they have the south side, which is also 138. I was very disappointed in this because I went to the north baggage claim to get my bag, in, or I'm sorry, it was one of the sides. It was the side that was the non-delta side. I went to the non-delta side to get my bag, and that was by accident because I was looking for carousel eight, and then I realized my bag wasn't there. So I went to the other carousel eight, which my bag was there. So that was a little confusing. I think they should have just went through like nine through 16, or at least had a letter di uh, distinguishing north or south or right or left from where you're coming from, if that makes sense. So outside of that, I still think it's really good. I think the train is a good way to get around underground. It also provides a good experience with various amenities and, uh, you know, a little bit limited on seating in some areas. I still think it's a really good airport, uh, but just because of those small issues that I mentioned, I think good is the right area for it. There's a couple small flaws, but overall for the size of the airport and the amount of passengers that go through there, it's very good and I'm really impressed. So good job there by Atlanta. All right, let me drag my memory back here to Minneapolis, St. Paul. This was in June of 2019 when I went to Minneapolis. My Minneapolis experience was good. I don't have any major complaints that I recall. Uh, I, if I remember correctly, there was parts of the tournament that were a little narrow, but do uh, keep in mind I was only in Terminal C, I believe is where the regional flights are out of. I'm pretty sure for Delta Connection uh, when I was there. So I really don't have a broad perspective, but from what I remember, and I was there for two layovers, I don't remember having any major problems, but I do remember that it was tight in areas and also seemed like that there wasn't as many amenities as airports comparable to the size of MSP, although I do think that it was pretty good. So I'm trying to decide where I want to put it. I'm between two categories right now and... 
you know i've heard overall pretty good assessments on msp i haven't heard anything bad I'm in between two categories. I'm in between good and average, but I think just because I don't know a ton about it and my experience was kind of just average both times, I think average is the right place to put it. Although this could change when I go there in the future and I have uh, different terminals that I fly into and that sort of deal. I was supposed to go there multiple times, but unfortunately it did not happen for various reasons. So I'm hopeful to go back and hopefully that'll be moving up. But I still think it's a good airport and really it's right on the border. In fact, I'll kind of do this. I know a lot of people uh, rank them. They'll put their favorite average airport at the front or favorite average item at the front and then the least favorite at the back so i'll put it up here at the front for the whole time and that'll kind of distinguish that's right on the border okay miami international airport so i was recently there as i flew in on america 787 and that was a bunch of fun i really enjoyed that uh jogging my memory back uh, I did end up walking around the airport a little bit, so I do kind of remember it uh, pretty well. Uh, I remember that it was really nice. Uh, there was some various elements that were really good, although it was, I wouldn't say that it was nothing special, but it also wasn't just stayed the art blew my mind, if that makes sense. I still think that it was a really good airport and uh, it provides some really nice views of the apron in multiple spots. It's also very unique, but do bear in mind, like I said, I was only up there at the D gates, so it's hard to judge. Uh, but one area that I wasn't as impressed by, and that's probably just because of how big the airport is, is the, um, the, uh, arrivals and departure area was a complete mess. There was a bunch of people and I wish there would have been more room, but although that really isn't their fault because the airport's just outgrown it and it's just a little bit, you know, it's in that area, you know, it's hard to judge to a degree. So with all that being said, I'm kind of between two categories here, pretty similar to MSP. Uh, I'm trying to decide where I want to put it. It's kind of tough when you only have one experience to go off of. This is where DFW and Tulsa are just going to absolutely thrive when it comes to experiences. I'm going to put it at the beginning of average. I think it's slightly better than MSP in that regard, and it's really close to good, but that that uh, arrivals area was just a little uh, bit bugging to me, and there was a few areas in there that just it made it an average experience. You know, it wasn't a top tier experience. So I think average is the place for it, and I think it fit, fits in well right there as well. Fort Lauderdale. So I was recently at Fort Lauderdale too, and I was very impressed, but do bear in mind, I was also in the Terminal D area, which is one of the newer concourses where Delta flies out of, and it was super, super nice. Although I have heard that there are a couple places at Fort Lauderdale that are dated and need a bunch of work. So with all that being said, there are good and bad. I know Fort Lauderdale is making many strides to get up to that top tier, and it really depends on where you fly into. So with all this being said, I think the right place for Fort Lauderdale is at the back of good. I think that most of the experience experiences are pretty good, but there's also a couple times where it's not quite as adequate. So it's a good alternative to Miami if you're looking for a smaller airport to fly into with less congestion. Although at the same time, there's some terminals there that not aren't quite as good. So I think that this fits in really nicely into our category of at the back of good. I still think it's a really nice area there. So that's super nice. The Albuquerque Sunport International Airport. So I've flown in here twice. However, one time was a connecting or a uh, same segment flight with Southwest. So it stopped in Albuquerque and went on. The other time I was there, it was in 2018. And from what I recall, it was very unique. I have to give huge props to Albuquerque. What I immediately think of when I think of this airport is the infrastructure and the architecture for the region of New Mexico. That airport really represented that well and I really enjoyed that element of it. I also know that they're making many strides in the innovation to continue to build upon that and make it even more uh, desert Philly, which is really cool. Uh, what I mean by that is they have uh, different projects that they're working on to make it even cooler. So that's really nice to see. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else particular that immediately comes to my mind, but it's a really nice airport. Uh, it's very unique. I like the word unique. Um, I think the passenger experience was very good. I don't remember any issues that we had. It was nice and spaced out. There was plenty of speeding. That being said, I think it is a very good airport and I'm going to put it in good. I will put it ahead of Atlanta for right now because I do think that the Sun Park's a really good airport. Uh, a couple of small nitpicks, but nothing crazy. Uh, borderline perfect. I want to name that outstanding. In fact, I'll just change that right now uh but i was trying to make this several times and it had the um it had the rankings from what's it called on there it had rankings from um previously sorry i'm just messing this all up now so we'll just say outstanding or right, what the heck i just outstanding all right that that's good enough all right so still though really good i was very pleased with it and uh okay i guess i can't do that so uh, very good. I was very pleased with it. And it is a super good airport. Borderline outstanding and uh, outstanding, I guess. And I think that it turned out really well. So good job there by Albuquerque. 
All right, Savannah. So ignore the airport of Bastner. This is just the only PNG that was online. I didn't really want to go uh, on a project to make that. So uh, here we go with the Savannah Hilton Head Airport. I was there all the way back in 2013 when I flew American in from Dallas and back. Uh, interesting story there, not on the airport. So that's not their fault. But American actually canceled our flight uh, until the next day because they only had one daily service to Dallas. I cannot recall why the flight was canceled. I think it was DFW weather most likely. But nevertheless, it was an interesting experience. Uh, I remember Remember, keep in mind it was 10 years ago so the experience certainly could be different today but I remember no issues plenty of space uh, fairly modern for the time it was nothing crazy it was a pretty good experience I'm uh, trying to think if there's anything that really stood out I don't again guys bear with me this was a long time ago uh, airport signage was good. Uh, the ceilings were a little low, but, and you know, it was a little dark inside, but it wasn't too bad. I think it's a beginning of average airport. I don't think that it's bad by any means, but I think it's just, it's not quite a good, you know? And that, again, that probably is different today, but just based off my 2013 experience, I think that the spot for it is average. And I think that it's a really good average airport and probably will be good the next time I go back. So I'm looking forward to redoing this list when I have more experiences at these airports going back to duplicates. So we'd love to see that. The Stillwater Regional Airport, I did fly into Stillwater once, even though I am 10 minutes away from this airport now. I did fly in here and out once on uh, when American first started service, and uh, it was uh, it was subpar to say the least. This is gonna be probably the lowest ranking of the video. It was uh, poor. So TSA's in a trailer. That is, I'm not kidding when I say that TSA is in a trailer, which is unacceptable. And it was very claustrophobic to say the least, very tight, not much room to maneuver around. And for two regional flight, uh, flights a day, I guess it gets the job done, but it's not great. Uh, additionally, uh, the gate seating area was way too tight and they should have known better. I know that they got service on short notice, but still though, they have not made many efforts to expand that. Uh, it's just a small airport. It's nothing special. I'm between between two categories because it gets the job done and it wasn't a pitiful experience and the fact that people are still making it work i'm going to give it mediocre but it's at the very back at best sorry that you can barely see it it's all the all white logo but uh it was not great it was average at best i it was subpar it was not a great experience but it got the job job done excuse me limited seating uh very claustrophobic and the whole process was just very very it, it was mediocre that's the perfect word for it so i think mediocre works it's not a complete utter failure because you know i didn't like lose my life or anything because of it but it certainly was not great so i'm going to give it uh that category of mediocre because i think it fits in well Austin Bertram International Airport. So I went through Austin just about a month ago on Southwest when I did a day trip there. I thought Austin was a good airport. I really enjoyed it. I think the infrastructure the airport's very nice. They have a good amount of amenities, uh, even though I wish there was a few more, but I think that it gets the job done and I didn't really venture onto the west side of the concourse, mainly just the east area and everything that I saw over there was uh, efficient and got the job done. Uh, plenty of amenities. Uh, they had some signage that kind of reminded me of Denver a little bit uh, in terms of the uh, coloring. It was yellow on black, which is what Denver had. So that was kind of a nice little throwback there. But yeah, it's a unique airport. TSA was also good. The check-in area is super nice. Austin's a solid airport and I'm going to give it a really nice good. I'm going to give it... I think that it was slightly better than Albuquerque. I think that they are both good, but I'm gonna give Austin a solid good. It's a really nice airport to fly through. I would not mind being the local of that airport. It's a really good area and it really makes uh, gets the job done. So that was certainly nice. And Austin Bertram International gets a really high ranking right there. That's super good. And I very much enjoyed that. It's super nice. Nashville International Airport. So I've been to Nashville twice, once in 2019 and once this previous year, 2022. Uh, I went on the Nashville trip for um, 2019 was for the American Indian flights I tried to get four and I only ended up getting two so that was the only reason we were there and it had the most American MD-80s that's why I chose it and uh, I was there for the day trip because uh, obviously Breeze Airways started Tulsa and Nashville so both were indirect reasons for why I ended up in Tennessee but it worked out well I can't say that was the only 10 I saw though, unfortunately, because it's a really good airport. There's many places of it I really like. I think Terminal C is pretty good. I also was in B quite a bit and I thought that it was pretty good, but it was nothing special. The amenities were average at best. There was there was a good amount of sit down restaurants, but there weren't really many gra uh, grab and go options. And the most inconvenient part to me of that was that they were all centralized in the food court, which is fine. I mean, it probably gets the job done, especially for locals that know, but 
just in general it's not as convenient so that was unfortunate seating was okay it depended on where the area was i noticed around the american southwest areas and see that it was really tight so that certainly wasn't as desirable although it was enough to get the job done um they are they did just open the new lobby which i didn't personally get to experience i had to walk around it which was inconvenient in that regard even though i did enjoy it personally and i had to go through security again luckily the line was short but nevertheless the new lobby is very good and it will uh, i'll kind of factor that i'll give it a little advantage in this even though i haven't flown through it yet but it looks super nice online so i'll give it a couple of bonus points there uh, in terms of the whole experience though both times uh i would say the first was better than the second although i did enjoy both times the second time was kind of saturated because i was trying to find a good place to go plane spotting and that wasn't really providing although airports are not focused around plane spotters so i'm not going to duck it uh, dock at any points for that just something i'm thinking about where i want to put it on between two categories and you know they're making strides to make it better the inside was pretty good although it was built more with the 1970s intentions of kind of what it felt like to me is very tight in some areas and it was still pretty good although i will say the bathrooms were nice you know the restaurants like i said got the job done it's still decent and there's enough and also i haven't been to d or a very much i wasn't a briefly but no, don't remember a ton about it I think it's an average airport where it is an average. I'm going to say it's between Miami and MSP. I think that's the right spot for it. I don't think it's a bad airport, although I do think that there's some work to be done with it. It's still a cool airport, though. It gets the job done, and I enjoyed it very much. So good job there, and it's a really good airport. So really nice job right there. The Charlotte Doubles International Airport is another airport I've been to twice. Uh, once, or actually, I guess three yeah three times technically twice in 2017 on two layovers and then i was also there in 2018 um during another layover all three were really good i remembered the airport very well so that was nice um yeah i got to go to multiple concourses too uh the new north a uh the old a b c e and uh, i think i got the briefly looking d it's a good airport. Uh, it's really solid. There's a bunch of nice amenities there. Uh, seating was also tight in some areas, although I will say one of the coolest uh, features of CLT is the uh, little chair area they have between both the A concourses. That's very cool, A North and A South. Um, the new A was really, really, really nice. I have to give it a huge uh, points for that, but you can tell that D, uh, B and C are kind of from the US air days is definitely what I could kind of get the vibe off of there. So, you know, there's highest and low points to both of it. And I think that it's a really high average airport. I'm going to put it at the very front because I think that it's borderline a good airport, but there's just some infrastructure there for the passenger experience. And I'm sure I, again, some of these airports were mainly layovers, so it's hard to depict whether arrivals were good, departures were good, you know, all those different elements that really can go into the decision of ranking these airports. So I think that it's a really solid high average airport. It's very close. Like these, all of these airports are really close. Honestly, every single one of them are really close to being good. I just think that there's a couple setbacks that keep them from the general passenger experience. If this was just my personal opinion on travel, because I love it, I would put everything in outstanding, but being more broad with it, I think CLT is a really good airport. And I'm sure a little bit, just like, um, particularly for, uh, like I was talking about with MSP Miami Savannah, if I go back more recently, I think that my opinion certainly will be up here, uh, higher for it. So I'm excited to see where it goes, but I think it's a really solid airport daytona beach is a really nice small airport uh, i flown i flew in here uh, when i was going on vacation in 2021 i really enjoyed it i deplaned and also uh replaned uh there in plane would be the proper term i really enjoyed it it was very good um the airport is super nice and modern muscle when it uh, had a renovation in the last 10 years at the minimum it was super nice uh the amenities were a little lacking but not enough to where it was a problem considering the size of the airport's only six gates i can't complain too much tsa is super small and i don't know why it wasn't a factor for us but maybe that was the reason it's small is because they don't have too many people going through there at once uh, airport on the inside super nice the infrastructure and the skylight are fantastic uh, nice big windows plenty of seating it's super nice um, I'm really close to giving my first outstanding here but the lack of amenities the check-in area was super nice I have to say that it's going to be my first outstanding choice of the day I was really close to ranking it at the top of good but I think the infrastructure and it's really an outstanding airport to fly through you know the one major setback to me is there was a lack of like a big restaurant or anything but the actual infrastructure the airport the rental car uh, area the check-in area it was all so nice to the point where I think it deserves outstanding it was an outstanding experience that's what I can say and I very much enjoyed it sure there wasn't a huge restaurant or anything but there was one that my dad and I utilized that was good and it got the job done so I'm 
I'm not going to complain. It was an outstanding experience. It was really good. One airport that I've been to many times, many times to say the least, uh, plenty to say the least, is the Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. I've been to this airport at least 20 times, probably more than that, and it's been great every time. Um, I haven't had any major setbacks, sure, you know, when you go somewhere 20 times, of course, you're going to have a hit or miss experience every time, and there are, but, you know, Dallas is a really unique design. The Skylink's a great way to get around. I think it's one of the most unique. The terminal setup's also very uh, standardized to where, okay, all your American mainline flights are going out of here. All your regional jet flights are typically going out of here, although it's a little spread out to a degree. All your international flights are going out here, and all your other airlines are going out in this area. <laughs> Uh, most of the areas of DFW are very modern and they look super good compared to what they did way back when. I have no major complaints. I'm trying to think if there's anything. Amenities are immense. Uh, seating's usually really good in most areas. There's a couple areas where it's a little scarce, but especially the new areas DFW's working on ex uh, that immediately come to mind are the uh, D gates for American that they have, even though it's only four gates, and also the new C gates at the very end of the concourse. Even though it's only like eight gates total, they've certainly making strides there, which looks really nice. I think it's a really good airport. Um, the uh, check-in and check-out experience every time I've done it has not been a, a bad at all. Although I will say I've flown American every single time, so it might be different for a smaller airline, but typically if you are flying out of Dallas, it's usually probably American in some way or fashion. Um, trying to think if there's any other uh, thoughts that depict my decision here. I'm trying to think. There's been a couple setbacks every now and then. It is a big airport, so connecting is not particularly the fastest. It usually is about 30 to 35 minutes from gate to gate if you go full-fledged, but comfortably 45 minutes to an hour. So that's every big airport is going to have that, though. Atlanta is a prime example of that. I think it's a very good airport. So good to the point where I think that it's at the top of good. It's borderline outstanding, but I'm sure that there may be a couple of elements that I'm not thinking of or an experience that I'm not a local that's not coming to my mind. I think Dallas is a very good airport. I don't think there's any complaints to be had. I think it is a good airport, very good, and so good to the point where it is almost outstanding. But it wasn't the experience I had at Daytona Beach because obviously it's hard from the plane spotter's perspective, but just a broad assessment in general, okay? A broad assessment in general. It wasn't to the point where, you know, I noticed it that much you know i noticed it a bunch that's why it's at the top of good but i didn't notice it as much as i did daytona beach in terms of like infrastructure and my experience so still super good i think it goes at the top of good very glad i got to go back to dallas love field recently to help my us uh, uh supporting cast for my next ranking which will be the love field airport so i've flown through here multiple times uh, predominantly in 2013, 14, 15, but I also flew through here most recently in 2021. I very much enjoyed it. I'm sorry, 2023, wrong year. I really enjoyed it. It's a really nice little airport. You know, it's nice and simple. Plenty of amenities, I will say that. There are plenty of restaurants if you want to sit down. There are plenty of options there. It's a super nice modern airport. Seating was a little limited in some areas, but for the most part, it was satisfactory. Um, so that was certainly nice. Um, trying to think if there was any other, it's also kind of hard to tell because it was at night, but I, the windows looked very big and it looked like it would be nicely lit during the day. So that was certainly a nice element of it. I can't think of anything that uh, deteriorates my decision of where I want to put it. I'm between, I'm between two categories right now. I'm trying to decide where the most adequate spot for Love Field the fall will be. It's a really nice airport, it really is. So much so that I'm gonna give it outstanding as well. Uh, I thought about giving it good, but I can't think of a good reason to give it good. I think it's not, it was an outstanding experience. I really enjoyed it. It's a very nice airport. Um, there's no reason to not give it outstanding, at least uh, from what I understand. Uh, my uh, my check-in and check-out experience was also very good when I flew through here later on. Uh, previously and then also my most recent experience was outstanding i think it's justifiable here behind daytona beach it's a very good airport it really caught my eye and i'm excited to make that video for you guys very soon so really good airport and it deserves the ranking that it gets washington reagan national airport so i was at reagan in 2018 when i flew in and out when uh, we went to um, washington dc very good trip i'm very excited to go back reagan is a interesting airport uh, I know they have a bunch of construction going on at least over the last 10 years, so that's certainly something to note. Uh, another element of note that immediately comes to my mind is that it's tight in some areas, but at the same time, it reminds me kind of, I'm trying to think of what it reminds me of. It reminds me of 
kind of like Austin almost to a degree. Um, you know, there's plenty to get around there and there's modern parts of it, but also some areas are a little bit dated and that's certainly of note. I will say the area that connects the concourse. This is very cool. That's a nice bridge. I like that area. It's nice and broad there. Charlotte has something similar too, so that's nice. Reagan's a good airport, but it's a little tight in areas. And also you had that whole regional jet bus situation, which certainly I don't know if it was ideal for most passengers. So that's another note. Uh, I also remember that the arrivals and departures was chaotic, but again, we're talking about one of the busiest airports in the US. So what can you expect? Not like the point at like Miami where I felt like Oh my gosh, am I going to get out of here? But you know, it was noticeable. So I think that it's an average airport. And I think it falls in the middle of the pack. I think it's a good airport and the infrastructure is making innovations. I think that my Nashville was better. And I think that. Mm, this is a tough choice where I want to rank it in the average category. Nashville was better. MSP. Trying to remember here. Sorry, you guys, this is just a tough choice where I want to put it out of all of these. I think right here between Houston and MSP is its best landing spot. It's a good airport, uh, not too bad, just a couple of particular elements that make it just what it is. And it's not too bad, but you know, it's in there. So there we go. All right, here we go with Denver International Airport. So Denver is one of my favorite airports for a variety of reasons, although its ratings probably going to suffer uh, slightly. So let's start with the the lesser. The lesser would be that the central parts of all three concourses A, B, and C are very dated, and they look like when the airport was built in 1994. Uh, it certainly needs some work, and I'm sure that they'll work towards it. But the signage is very blah, especially for the gates when you're trying to find them. Low ceilings, limited seating. Um, the middle area is too tight, but the expanded area completely makes up for it. The new areas on the end of the concourses are outstanding. You couldn't have done better. The signage is amazing. The spacing's fantastic. The ceilings are high. It uh, gives plenty of natural light, just brings a vibe and it's really fun. My favorite area at Denver is probably gate C66 because it provides a really good spotting location. Although if it would have been warm, I would have been on the patio, which is another great amenity of Denver. It's super nice. Um, and then also the train's really cool. The central part of the concourse is also really cool with the arch texture and everything that, that provides. So that's super cool. I want to give Denver outstanding really bad. I really do. But the middle part of the concourses are holding me back to where I think it has to be a, a, a past DFW for good. And I don't want to do this because the new parts of the airport are absolutely outstanding and they are super nice and it provides an amazing passenger experience and aviation enthusiast experience. But when you consider those middle parts of the concourse, it's just hard to really get that vibe and the low ceilings, you know, the mood just completely changes. It's like when you go into Denver and let me know if any, if any of you have flown through Denver and agree with this, you walk in and then you're like, what airport am I at? This is kind of average. This looks like 2000s. And then you get to new part and then you're like, what airport am I really in? This is the best airport in the United States. The good makes up for a bunch of the bad, and it's also taking over a bunch of the airport, and the patios are outstanding. They're one of the coolest places in the United States airports, but the whole airport broad assessment, I also deplaned at Denver and replaned as well uh, quite a while ago. I remember that experience was really good. The Jepson Terminal is fantastic. Another reason why it moves up. TSA is also fairly reasonable. I think that good is the place for it at the very front. It really sucks that I can't make outstanding, but unfortunately I can't ignore those older middle pieces of the tournament. So certainly really cool though. And I think it's a really nice airport. Los Angeles International Airport. I flew Allegiant here when we went on a trip in 2016. And unfortunately, LAX has good and bad. Uh, you know, the um, experience I had was fine. Uh, it, it reminds me of low ceilings and limited seating again, but there's also some terminals that are making significant progress there, which is really cool. T-Bit's really nice, especially in the newer area, but there's also, I think the Alaska terminal I heard was absolutely horrible. Terminal six, maybe it was. I think the United one was also average at best. I think the, I think the Delta and American ones were even not that good too. So. LAX, unfortunately, is going to fall quite behind because of the infrastructure although and the experience. And I'm sure it's just like Miami when it comes to that arrivals and departure section. So hopefully I'll be getting back soon so I can get some more validation. But I think that my assessment's pretty valid here. Unfortunately, it's going to be at the back of average. I hate to do this because the actual plane spotting there and all the aircraft you can see and just in general being in Los Angeles is super cool. But 
As a general passenger, if you can and want to avoid the chaos, you probably want to fly into an airport like Burbank, Ontario, Long Beach, Santa Ana, etc. So it's still a great airport though. It's really cool in general, but unfortunately due to how the airport operates, the back of average is where the airport goes. And most people have probably put in mediocre. I'll give it a little bit of slack since they're making progress, especially like T-Bit for instance, but that's the best we can do. Myrtle Beach. So I was in Myrtle Beach back in 2017. And I immediately remembered the check-in area was really nice. I remember the terminal area was also super good too. And I usually don't remember airports that well from this time frame, but I remember Myrtle Beach was really nice. I was very impressed. I was not really a huge infrastructure person at the time when I did this. So that's a consideration here. I think that the biggest consideration to go with Myrtle Beach is how nice the airport is. I remember it really reminds me of Daytona Beach, to be honest. What is it with all these beach airports being super nice? But it's not surprising. Uh, Myrtle Beach is getting another outstanding. It's going right behind Love Field. It's a really nice airport. I highly recommend traveling to it if you can. But I remember both times when we went in 2017, when we uh, deplaned and replaned, that it was really nice. And I really enjoyed my experience. It was really good. Uh, amenities are a little bit, eh, but you know, I, again, it was 2017, so that very well could have changed. I think Myrtle Beach is a great airport. It deserves the outstanding category. Okay, this logo is the current website Las Vegas logo. I know the McCarran logo was used for a long time and I don't know which one's the proper one to use. I just went with what the uh, website currently provides. Las Vegas was good. I flew into the Southwest uh, concourse both times and I hope to get back soon, but that's the current assessment that I have. It was really nice. I very much enjoyed it. Uh, I remember that it was kind of that Albuquerque feel. It really reminded me of Albuquerque in terms of the infrastructure and whatnot. Uh, I still think that it was a really good airport to fly through and pretty good. I'm sure that it might have a comparable Miami LAX experience when it comes to deep or, you know, uh, arrivals and departures. Uh, check an area. I, uh, mm, sorry, I'm really, I'm going to have to jog my memory a, memory a bunch. I barely remember it. Uh, I think it was average. I don't think it was too crazy. I think I think Vegas is a really high average airport. You know, it reminds me a bunch of kind of the Miami CLT range. Mm, I wish I was in the other concourse so I could have a more broad assessment. But from my personal experience, mm, it was solid. It was really solid. It really was. I think that it was a really high solid. I'm gonna put it uh, behind CLT and above Savannah. Somewhere in that range, you know, this average category is really where I've ranked a bunch of these, but that's kind of where they've been. I think that it certainly deserves there. It was a good airport. It got the job done and it was really nice. So I think that it's certainly a solid airport in that regard. So good job, Vegas. And I think that it's certainly making progress. And who knows, maybe next time I go back, my opinion will change drastically. We will see. To keep in mind, it was 2015. So that was eight years ago when I went. O'Hare. So here's another really interesting airport. It's really hit or miss. Uh, I've flown in here multiple times, most recently in 2022 for the Airlines International Convention. I flew United, so I flew out of Terminal 1. I have also flown, in, uh, done layovers in Terminal 3 with American. Uh, I thought the infrastructure was solid in most places, although there's areas that need some work. I thought the amenities were pretty immense. I thought the gate seating areas were, you know, they got the job done in most areas, although it was a little tight in some areas, although that could have changed for other areas. And the uh, arrival experience was also good in the departure experience. Uh, very spaced out check-in, but also at the same time, finding the hotel shuttle area was tough. So that's another note for most people. It was solid. It wasn't too bad. It was a little chaotic, but it is O'Hare. It's one of the busiest airports in the United States. So I will give it some slack in that regard. I thought it was a pretty good airport overall. Pretty good, but not too bad. You know, really thinking about this in a broad perspective in general. It's an average airport, I believe. I think that's the right place to put it. I think it's falling somewhere in this area. I think it's it's somewhere right next to Reagan MSP. That's the vibe I'm getting. I'm going to put it right behind MSP. I think that's the reasonable spot for it. It's a middle of the pack airport. It's not too bad. It certainly gets the job done, and I'm really excited to see where O'Hare goes. I think the infrastructure T1 is super good, but also you have to consider T3 and T5 wish I would have flown through it to this point, but I think it's just, you know, there. I've seen a bunch of AS Aviation trip ports so that also has helped and Jeb Brooks has also flown through there quite a few times. So pretty good, not too bad, but uh, what can I say? It's it's a, it's an average airport, but it's also really cool in its own way. So I really like that about it. Okay, is this gonna be Phoenix? Yes, it is. Okay, so Phoenix. 
Phoenix was a solid airport. I flew through T4 on a connection, so it's a little saturated, but really gives off the desert vibe. That's really cool. It's a little tight in areas and seating is a little tight. Uh, amenities are decent. Uh, it's another average airport. It's a pretty good. Uh, I will give it the arch the infrastructure very similar to Vegas in Albuquerque in that regards so That's really cool really gives off that vibe, which is really nice I'm thinking it's right. It reminded me a bunch of Vegas, but again, I didn't deplane. plane I didn't go to any of the other concourses I've seen that terminal 3 is super nice on both sides after that renovation So with that being said, I think it is above Phoenix. I think it's a really good air or I'm sorry above Las Vegas I think it's a really good airport I'm gonna think about this for a few more seconds. I almost want to say, sorry, I'm just jogging my memory back. It's been a while, but I remember there was some tight spots. I think that's the good spot. I think it's right next to CLT, but in ahead of Vegas. It's a good airport, certainly gets the job done. There's a bunch of amenities there and it's super nice. So really good right there. Okay, this airport is Rochester, Minnesota. Rochester International Airport. Rochester was a good airport. It was uh, not quite the level like Daytona or Myrtle Beach, but it also wasn't, you know, um, all these are big airports. It wasn't Savannah. It was a little bit better than that, um, but it was also kind of tight on the inside. It was a very basic airport. You know, there wasn't much to it, but it got the job done. There wasn't too many amenities as well. So I'm borderline between putting it here at the somewhere in the top of average or also maybe at the back of good. But it also was really nice. The check-in area was really good, but then the seating's just average. So I think for the overall experience in planning, deep planning, you know, it was an average experience. It was nothing that I completely went insane about, but it also wasn't bad. So I'm thinking it's right next to Savannah, Miami, Nashville. I think it's just comparable, you know, it's nothing crazy. I think that it's somewhere back here now that I really think about it, but it's certainly not horrible. It's just basic. There's nothing that makes it stand out. So I think that it's it's very convenient, though. I will say that. It's very convenient. So I think with that said, trying to decide, I think it needs to go somewhere right about here where I initially thought. This is, I think, the right spot for it. I'm just trying to decide where. Um, Between Savannah, Miami, Nashville... I think I'm going to put it right here. I think that's the right spot for it. It's just basic, but it gets the job done super nice. And it certainly is a really cool airport. So that's really nice. And I absolutely love that effort there from Rochester. Although I think that it's certainly making progress. I'm excited to see hopefully some renovations and whatnot here in the future. San Diego. Uh, I barely, barely remember this. I probably really shouldn't even put it on here. This was all the way back in 2012. So this was 11 years ago when I flew through San Diego. I know they're making strides. So I'm going to have to take a really big inference here. I think it's a pretty decent airport. You know, I remember it was a little narrow in spots, but again, this was 11 years ago. So this is really tough. We flew Southwest in from Vegas and I cannot remember where we flew out to on the connection. That, my memory is that jogged at this point. It was a very vague memories. I think I'm just going to put it right here in the middle since I don't know a ton. Just, you know, just in case it's either really solid or really bad. I know they're building some new terminals, so that certainly should help. So I think right here above Rochester is a great spot for it. Again, I don't know a ton, so it's hard to say, but certainly very interesting indeed. And I absolutely love that effort. So good job right there. And that's absolutely awesome. What airport's this? Oh, San Antonio. So I flew to San Antonio in 2013. I actually remember this one a little uh, better because I had uh, some uh, photography during this time and I uh, briefly remember it. So, or pretty good actually. So I remember that it was very comparable to quite a few other US airports. I think that it was good in its own way. Uh, amenities were decent. I also thought that the infrastructure, keep in mind this was 2013, was good at the time. They have obviously Terminal 1 and Terminal 2. This is tough because there's elements of it I liked, but there's also elements of it that were just, mm. so, you know, it's a good airport. I think it's gonna fall right here between that uh, Savannah area is kind of where I'm feeling it. You know, it's it, it gets the job done, it's not too bad. I, But you know, San Antonio stood out, or I'm sorry, Savannah stood out a little more to me than San Antonio, so I think it falls right here. This is the landing spot for San Antonio. It's a good airport, it's average, definitely in the higher tier. I really should have made this um, above average and below average tier, so you can just imagine kind of a cutoff right here, I think it's a reasonable spot above average, below average, but certainly gets the job done. You know, I probably should have did above and below. That would have really helped here, but nevertheless, it certainly gets the job done. I think it's pretty solid there. So love to see that effort right there. 
All right, as we get down to the last few here, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I did not really intend for it to go so long, but of course I'm very good at talking. So, Orlando Sanford, uh, we flew in here in 2015 uh, on Allegiant, worked well in from Tulsa. Really enjoyed it. There was a uh, very good experience. I remember that it was, there was enough seating, but it was kind of vague as well. Um, complimenting that, the check-in and check-out experience was also fine. It was nothing stellar. It's just one of your, you know, Florida airports that has a bunch of low cost operations, obviously. With that being said, it's kind of tough to jog my memory on this one, but I remember it enough to where I think average is the right location for it. It reminds me kind of in this area right here, San Antonio, Miami, somewhere in here. I think I'm going to put it right behind Miami. I think that's a reasonable spot for it. It's pretty solid and it got the job done for us. So land of Sanford's a pretty good airport, but again, it could have changed drastically since 2015 and it might be better. So absolutely love that effort and it's looking really good. Okay. Oklahoma city. So this is more of a recent one for me as I flew in here, uh, off of Atlanta for Delta. I also got to go in here multiple times uh, when I was plane spotting. So that was nice. The check-in area is fantastic. It's super nice, but you also, then you get to the baggage claim and then you realize what airport you're flying into. The inside's really nice. The Delta expansion area is fantastic. It looks really good. And also just the rest of the terminal, the renovation really helped. It looks really good on the inside. So OKC is really a nice airport in general. Parking amenities are nice. Um, and yeah, these really get down to these last two for parking and really a more in-depth experience. Parking was good. Um, yeah, it was just overall very good. I have no complaints. The uh, West Side Terminal is also really nice. It was very good, and especially considering the circumstances and the check-in, super nice. I think it's a really solid, good airport. I think it's a middle of the pack. I now that I'm thinking about it, it's kind of back. It's somewhere in this range. I'm gonna say that it was better in Albuquerque, but it's not better in Austin. It's a really solid, good airport. It's right in the middle of them. So Will Rogers is a really good airport and it's fantastic. Really, really good. And that leaves us with one airport and my most flown Tulsa International Airport. And this is where most of my trips always start and end. I've flown through here dozens of times over the years. And I have two completely different takes. Before 2015, it was average. Uh, the inside of the airport, very low ceilings, limited seating, limited amenities. It was just average. But after the renovations in 2015 is when I've done the majority of my flying, it is outstanding. The skylight's fantastic, really good amenities. Of course, there's a Chili's in there. There's a local uh, burger place, which is really cool. There's plenty of different Hudson News areas to utilize, even though they're expensive, it's still nice in that regard. You also have uh, some various local branches, which is really cool. Uh, you know, it doesn't really like speak like okay this is the southern plains midwest area but also you know it's a really nice inside you know it doesn't have that local feel to a degree but also you know for me it feels like it's home but obviously it, it is so it's hard to say in that regard but the in the whole airport and you guys have probably seen my check-in vlogs at one point or another or any of the videos i've done there airport vlogs it's a really nice airport I've really enjoyed every experience I've had and I'm not being biased whatsoever. It's been a good experience every time. Sure, there's been a mishap every now and then, but for the most part, the signage is fantastic. The uh, gradient floors are super nice. The ceilings are nice, uh, plenty, I mean, plenty of seating. The amenities in there are super good. There's plenty of options to utilize if you need to eat or any of that. The restrooms are super nice. Um, the windows are nice, um, everything. It's, it's just a vibe. That being said, and no bias whatsoever, you can go to the airport yourself and see if you agree with me. It is an outstanding airport. And I'm not saying that because I uh, live here. I'm saying that because it really is. And you saw where I put OKC, it's a good airport, but Tulsa is outstanding. We're not standing. This is the tough part. So I'm trying to think of where it fits because you know, it was really outstanding in every regard but it has really good amenities for the size of the airport. So I'm not saying that, you know, and this also could be kind of saturated too because of how much attention I paid to it. But I really feel like it's at the front and that's not even trying to be biased. I'm just trying to be realistic because the amount of amenities, you have two really outstanding restaurants. Uh, well, kind of almost three with that cafe they got. So you almost have three really, really good restaurants. You have a great check-in area, very good. But then at the same time, you know, parking's just average and the arrivals and departures is very good. The baggage claim's also very up to date. So, I mean, 
there's really no reason here i don't see i mean i'm trying to be as unbiased as possible but i mean i can't find a reason for why it's not at the beginning outstanding you know it's very comparable experience to myrtle beach but then again like i said the the airport is bigger though so that's kind of in Mer uh, daytona's defense in that regard in terms of where the restaurants are if that makes sense geez boys this is a tough decision and then you know dallas love field there wasn't as many people though so i mean just in my personal experience but i would hate to rank it one just because i live here but maybe i shouldn't feel bad in that regard because it really is an outstanding airport <sighs> just trying to think of what validates where it falls in outstanding it's a really nice airport on the inside. It really is. There's like no, nothing that's telling me why it shouldn't be at the very front because the balance and blend of this airport is just outstanding. All right, you know what? I, I can't think of a good reason. So I sat here for about two minutes. I could not think of a good reason to put it anywhere besides the top of the list. And I'm not saying that to say that. I mean, I'm really not trying to. And maybe, like I said, it's because I've paid more attention to it. I've flown here for of like 15 years and all those reasons. But I mean, I can't think of a good reason. So that's the list. And I think it's a really good one. Um, if I could go back and do one thing over, I definitely would have made an above average and a below average category that would have very much have helped. Although I think that this list really does the job well. No <laughs> rest in peace, the Stillwater. But all the other airports, you know, Tulsa, Daytona, Dallas Love Field, Myrtle Beach, those four really stood out to me. But I also think that most of the hub airports really did well here. Denver, Dallas, Atlanta really did good. And then you have multiple mid-sized airports that have kind of fell in the middle of the pack. Uh, Nashville, Rochester, uh, you know, all of these are pretty good. Houston really didn't mean to fall that far back, but it kind of did. So it kind of just happens. But yeah, that's the list, everybody. Sorry that this video was so long. I really didn't intend for it to be. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a bunch of fun to make. I really enjoyed ranking all these airports. And I'm certainly interested in doing this with airlines, aircraft types, and all of those different uh, categories. So let me know what you guys think about that. would love to do it. And that would be a bunch of fun. But let me know what you guys think about that. But with all that being said, everybody, that will do for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. My name is Roger of Aviation. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Take it easy, everybody. Stay safe, trust the process, do what you love and love what you do. My name is Roger of Aviation. I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys soon as Roger of Aviation is signing off.